He's, he's got too much of a laid back character for me. I, I want somebody who the, the players can respect, so that when the captain says to them, "You you need to be, you, know, you need to pull your," they listen to him rather than like shove their hands off like that. That's not respect. So welcome back to Small Little Alliance FC. And last season, as we all know, Birmingham City got relegated from the EFL Championship to League One. And throughout the season, particularly towards the end of the season, myself and Matt were doing post-match analysis videos and we were questioning the attitude on occasions, on, on a lot of occasions, uh, of the players. Uh, one of those players in the team was Dion Sanderson, our captain. And he recently put a post on Instagram uh, apologising for last season and really saying that he wanted to commit himself to effectively making things right for next season. In this video, me and Matt want to discuss that and talk about Dion as a player, talk about the statement and just give our general opinions, really. So, Matt, did uh, you read that uh, comment? I mean, I'm going to read it out in a minute, but did you see the post he put on Instagram? Yeah, I did see the uh, the post he put on Instagram. And to be fair, before I give my opinion, it's probably best to, I think we just start it off with you. Yeah, we okay. read it out and then we'll go from there. Really. It's only, it's only yeah, short. Yeah, exactly, so, yeah. so this is what Dion said. This is from his um, account on his Instagram page. Uh, Hello, Blue Noses. Uh, I haven't been on social media for some time now. I felt it was important for me to take a step back and reflect on the past few months. It's been a tough it's been tough to deal with as a player, a captain and as a person. I want to apologize to all of you um all of the mistakes I've made both on and off the pitch. Birmingham City is my home. It's a privilege to represent this football club and I feel and to feel the support of the fans from the moment I arrive at the stadium to the minute I step off the pitch. I'm eager for the season to start and I'm looking forward to getting back to work with much more, with, with much more focus, hard work and resilience. I've no doubt that we will overcome the setback together and get the club moving back in the right direction again. Hope to see you all very soon. And most importantly, thank you for your support. That has been incredible. Keep right on. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Dad, and for all those who have been watching the podcast for an extended period of time, I'm not Dion Sanderson's biggest fan. Uh, and I think the reason behind that was you can don't have to be the most talented player in the world, but if you work hard and you graft for this club, the Blues fans will always get behind you. And you could see his attitude change last year for me. He, Some people use the term down tools. Some people use the term stop trying. But you could definitely see a player who was sort of struggling behind the scenes and you could see at times the lack of passion and the lack of drive exactly the uh, principles that we were talking about at the back end of last season but when I did read that I thought that was brave that was courageous I thought it was it took a big man to come out and apologise for stuff not just on the pitch but off the pitch as well so he acknowledged you know elements of his personal life which had maybe gone wrong as well um, but yeah, I appreciated the apology. I don't think he's off the hook. I think actions speak louder than words. Mm. So let's see him come back to pre-season. Let's see him give his all. And you know what, Daddy? If he turns up next season and he's willing to fight for the badge again and he he, he shows passion and he, sh and he shows drive, I'm sure the Blues fans will start to actually forget about last season and start to move on. And I think that was maybe the starting block of his redemption story. And I hope he comes back bigger and stronger and better. Um, but for me, the apology was nice. I appreciated it. It showed me growth. It showed me his maturity. But for me, actions speak louder than words, and I want to see him prove this moving into next season. Yeah, fair point. Yeah, he, yeah, it's all right writing something like that, but uh, it's actually demonstrating through his performances and his commitment to the club that uh, that he, you know, he actually means it. Uh, he's still only twenty four years old. So from a player's perspective, he's still pretty young. Okay, I'm not, I'm not making any excuses for him. I'm just making some common. Uh, observations really uh, and I think it's clearly I see something was wrong it was you could tell couldn't you uh, and obviously um, I like the fact that he has apologised I think you know we we were owed about 30 apologies from players last season if I'm honest we only got one from we, Bakuna we I got think. Bakuna was the only one who shortly after relegation uh, that I saw apologised if I've missed any I apologise but I only saw see, Bakuna I think you're right um, and that's the, the second one that we've yeah. got but uh, it, it, it took us to do that you yeah know, I agree you, to, to, to come out and say that uh, you apologise I, like, I like some of the things he's said in the statement yeah. in terms of Birmingham City being his home he's acknowledged that he's made mistakes and that uh, he wants to try and rectify them yeah. um, and I just hope he can get back to the player that we saw when he was on loan first with us a young energetic um, enthusiastic player um, I think playing in that team last season wouldn't have helped anybody because of the way it was. But, but the, that's no excuse for him. The manager turnover alone would have been massively disruptive for these players, wouldn't they? And, you know, I criticised Deion Sanderson for his attitude, for 
the way he was our club captain but never did TV interviews and showed didn't show much passion and desire. And I don't, I don't yeah. feel like he was worthy of wearing our club's captaincy band. However... He's not a bad footballer. I'm not. I'm not saying he's a rubbish footballer. He never deserves to play for Birmingham City again. I'm just saying, you know, the ethics of this club, hard work and graft. I was upset to see a player that looked like he had given up. And there's a player there. Look at him under Eustace. Different mm. player. Under Mowbray, he started to get his form back again, and then he all got disrupted again. For no fault of anyone, of course, Mowbray yeah. was, was was poorly. You know, I'm not, not not saying that that was through anyone's fault. I'm just making a point that when Sanderson has stability. I think he's a decent ball player. And I think I think now we've got Chris Davies. You know what? I'm really interested to see how that conversation goes between Chris Davies and Dion. Because uh, you know Chris Davies is going to pull everyone to his office at some point, isn't he? And go, you know, what's the culture like here? How, you know, yeah. how do you see yourself here? Where do you want to be in a couple of years? All these sorts of questions that the manager will ask them. I'm dying to know whether Dion is going to bring that statement and that attitude into that meeting with Chris Davies and say, look, there were some problems last year. I'm really sorry. But this year, I'm going to put my head down and I'm going to graph yeah. for you. Yeah, he he's not a captain. You he's know, not a captain. You know, I I, th- I think he's a decent player. I know you know some Blues fans may disagree with that, but I think there is a really really good player in there. See, I I, I think decent. I don't think yeah. really good player personally. I think there's a, de- the, 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 the a decent player. No, in there. I think I think there's a better than decent player in there. In Fair my opinion, in my opinion, I think I think he's better than decent, and I think he's obviously whatever happened last year let him down significantly, and that's proven as well. But every manager that we had last season, which was six, mm. everybody picked him. Mm-hmm. If you, he played thirty-seven games last season, at forty-six in the league, so therefore, you know, some players, as you know, as we change the managers, they drop this one and brought this one in, and yeah. he he was almost but like a. We, if, if he without injuries and suspensions, he probably would have been ever present. Yeah. I was just about to say, but at times we were really thin at the back. You know, Buchanan, Buchanan had to play centre half against Leeds on New Year's Day. So, yeah. so fair yeah, enough. Yeah, there were some games that he was either injured or suspended. So there were games he missed. I think those were yeah. the periods when you were talking about actually. Um, didn't he get sent off against somebody? Oh, it's Southampton. Got sent off against Southampton, and which, which was ridiculous. It was a crazy, but it, we, obviously that resulted in a three-match ban, didn't it? Or was it three or four matches? But that, that yeah. was a period of time he was out as well, uh, and he had a few injuries as well. Uh, one thing I thought which was encouraging as well after that statement as well, I saw I think it was on um, Instagram or somewhere, or maybe on a Facebook group that he's actually already started his uh, training for the pre-season with Redditch United. Yeah, I saw that as well. I mean, that's good. I mean, obviously, I think he's obviously keeping himself ticking over, ready for pre-season. I think um, from what I've read about Chris Davis, I think pre-season is going to be pretty brutal mm. because he wants this high intensity and he's, he's talking about never giving anybody an easy day. So yeah. if I was if I was a footballer uh, waiting to start pre-season with Chris Davis, I'd be in the gym now, <laughs> wouldn't you? I'd, yeah, yeah. I'd, be, I'd, literally, I'd, be, yeah. I'd be joining the army for a month yeah. just, to, just well, to go through a few assaults. Well, Pakes tick that box. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but not, not by choice, but by the... Yeah, but, yeah. But, um, yeah so, so um, I think uh, I think Dion, um, you know, like you, you said, I think it's a really good uh, value point you've made. Really, it's, it's about you know, is the proof in the pudding there? So you've said that you've obviously want to stay at the Blues. I, I do like it though. When, I know it's only words. I get that, but I do like it when players say that they, you know, I want to. I, you know, I want to rectify my wrongs. Yeah. I want to stay at the club. Oh, Dad, my we're all human beings. Yeah. It, you know, we all deserve second chances. We all have a shot of redemption. You know, I'm a married man. I've got two kids. I'm always making mistakes. Fair enough. Yeah. Smaller scale in the house, in the home. But, you know, yeah. if my wife or kids never forgive me. Well, <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it's one of those things. It takes a, a man to come out and apologize, acknowledge the mistakes. Yeah. And as you say, I just want to see him now. Put that, put those words into action, put this into motion, and fight for this club and 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 push it, be part of the journey to push us forward. If he's going to be a bad apple in a cart, get rid of him, you know. And and I think Chris Davis will see that and he'll see through that pretty much from day one. Chris Davis seems so switched on. He knows what he wants in his in his pre-match pre-match sorry in his previous interview. He said he wants to win and he does he wants to win with good people or he doesn't want to win with bad people. So he's going to take a couple of weeks to figure out who's who, who's what in the team, who has influence, who does this. And I hope Dion puts his hands up and he goes, "I'm here. I'm here to work. I'm here to fight. I'm here to put. I want you to put me through my paces, and I want to." prove to you why I, why I deserve to be a first team player and if you don't see me as a first team player I'm going to prove to you why I'm going to fight yeah. to be a first team but player but that's what all players that's exactly. the attitude that a good player and a good winner has uh, as well as we know as well you know we're not going to talk about this in any detail but he did have problems in his personal life as well that was well publicised so there was a lot going on um, at the well, time with him he, I think he, he said in his statement he let himself down and, and pro- both professionally and private, uh, personally yeah. uh, as well but he's got to he's got to realise that he's a role model you know, and um, his life is not just about what he does on the pitch. He's going to have young lads watching his games and 
hopefully aspiring to be the yeah. character and type of player that he is. And uh, he's got to realise, I'm sure that um, he, he, he will acknowledge that he let himself down personally yeah. as well. Yeah. We're not here to judge. That's not what we're doing here. But we, we can't not do this podcast and not mention that it wasn't just on the pitch he had issues, it was off the pitch. And that wouldn't have helped him either. Yeah, yeah. I think the fact, the fact he said in the quote, I've been off social media for a while, to me says a man who is struggling with the press and the constant heat on him and the I mean that is part of the professional football as well kind of what you said dad when you're a professional footballer you're held to a higher standard aren't you you know you yeah. are you are part of the community you're, and you're, in, the, and you're in the spotlight it, you're you know, in the spotlight you're, you're in the community yeah. young boys are looking up to you oh when, when I was growing up the Blues players were my idols you know yeah. uh, I, I used to love looking at the Blues players you know Robbie Savage Jeff Horsfield Stan Lazaridis all those players from back in the day they were back in the day like you know, God's walking among men, weren't they? Because as a young boy and you love football, you love your club, you admire your your footballers and your and your and your uh, your players. So I agree, he needs to hold himself to a higher standard. And I think this could be hopefully the start of his uh, redemption story, the start of him moving forward. And as I say, if he's in it and his heart's in it, I I I, I will back Sanderson. It, I, I won't, you know, give him a hard time. But he's not off the hook, and he needs to pr- prove to us now that these actions mean words. Uh, I mean, sorry, words means action. Yeah, that was that was a good starting point there. Yeah, uh, and I've got three questions for you. I'll give you one oh, at a time. Yeah, give okay. you give you some reactions to this as yeah, well. Yeah. Do you think the timing of the statement on Instagram has anything to do with the Chris Davis appointment? Because it came not too far after it. One hundred percent. Yeah. Absolutely, no doubt. I think. I don't know whether Chris. Do you think Chris Davis would have spoken to the players already, or do you think he? I, I'm not sure. I'd, I'd imagine know. they would have had some contact. Yeah, because so, they're in contact in different ways, aren't they? Whether they can do Zoom or, or you know, uh, online, uh, or whether yeah. they've got them all in. Because like, some of them will be off on holiday yeah. now, so it'd be hard to get them all together as a big group. Yeah. Um, you know what? I think Ruddy possibly looks back on that podcast now. Chris Davis is in charge and gone. Oh no. I wish I'd have played my cards a bit closer to my chest because <laughs> I, I think when Chris Davis does an interview, how impressive does he sound? Yeah, he yeah. knows what he wants. He knows his strategy. He knows his philosophy on football. And Sanderson, I think he's looked at those interviews and gone, oh, blimey neck. Yeah. And, and I hope he's come out and apologised not for the right reasons and not because he saw Chris Davis and gone, oh, no, I need to now start impressing this manager. But I think... Just to answer your question shortly and simply, I think that's 100% had an impact on that statement. Yeah, me, me too. Uh, my second question is uh, is to you. Well, what do you think the other players are going to think about that statement he's made? Because they'll obviously read it. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think they will be happy that a colleague and a teammate has acknowledged that there was mistakes and he was man enough to step up and apologise. But I also, even to his teammates, he's going to be accountable and they might even want to ask him some questions or... or but he should or... be anyway. Yeah, 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 true, yeah. He's, he's a club captain. Of course he is, he's yeah, He's the yeah. role model, so he should be anyway. Uh, I, you know, to answer, to answer that question yeah. for myself, I think, you know, that the other players will have obviously seen that uh, statement he made on Instagram. And I think maybe if it does have the effect of making them look at themselves, think, well, actually, you know, Dion stepped up now and apologised. And don't get me wrong, I don't I don't expect to have a glut of apologies from all the... I don't no, get, that's that not going to happen anyway. That's yeah. not about this, but it might make them look at themselves. And actually, I need to be a better player now myself. I yeah. need to be... I need to be more of a man about things, you know. I need to be stepping up and setting an example and a role model. Yeah. If it has that impact, then that's a that's a positive thing. Hopefully, um, yeah. My final question, which is quite a big one, and yeah. we've talked about or touched on this already, mm-hmm. but do you think under Chris Davies, Dion Sanderson will remain as club captain? I don't think he will. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't even, my personal preference, I wouldn't want him to be captain. I think that at the moment, we've said it in a video that got aired yesterday, it's dying for... Christian Bielek with the current squad of players that we have and Chris Davis might want to bring his own pit bull in who, 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 who's who got his own eye on his own captain uh, and I don't think Deion Sanderson is made for captain material I don't think he rallies the team enough you know he puts his head yeah. down when goals are conceded he's not uh, you can interpret a captain how you want I want quite an aggressive captain me I want too. someone who rallies someone yeah, up me you know, too when yeah. that goal when we, when we concede a goal you don't put your head on the floor and, and get emotional you get back and you fire your team back up that's what I want to see and I also want to see a, a captain that comes out and does TV interviews and says you know oh no we weren't at the races today or this this and that he was he was an invisible captain for the, pretty much the yeah. entirety of the year he never yeah. did any press yeah. barely heard from him all these sorts of things and maybe he doesn't actually really want to be captain has anyone ever asked him if he actually wants to be the club captain maybe he's not designed to be that I was always a semi-decent footballer but I was never captain material because I never had it in yeah. me to do the shouty part of it and the rally part of it whereas 
we need a pit bull this season and I don't think Dion's it and I think Chris Davis is going to notice really early yeah. that he's not captain material. Uh, I think I think I agree with that as well, what you said. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's got too much of a laid-back character for me. I, I want somebody who the, the players can respect so that when the captain says to them, you you need to be, you, know, you need to pull your eye, they listen to him rather than like shove their hands off like that. That's not respect. Exactly. Uh, and I've seen that on the pitch. You know, when I can't remember what game it was. I think it was Bakuda. He was giving, he got a right telling off for not tracking back. Yeah, and he literally, I, he, he just went, he went like that. I he, saw it at Ipswich away yeah. uh, when Dembele didn't track back for that second goal. Yeah. Sanderson tried to give him a telling off, and, and yeah. Dembele just put his yeah. hands in the air. Like, I, I mean, uh, that, that, that's as much about these players as it is about the captain. But it's not because if the captain demands respect, they wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. That's and that's the issue I have with uh, with with Deion Sanderson as captain. I think that's what we need to do, ensure that we we. Integrate Sanderson back into the team, see how he does, but get a strong captain. Yeah. Agreed. Really, really, really crucial. Agreed. And um, we said in the video yesterday, I talked about the spine of the team and how important the spine is, and the captain dictates how powerful that spine is. So for me, centre, for me personally, I love a captain to be centre mid or centre back because they can command and they have that peripheral yeah, yeah. vision of the entire pitch. And I, I don't think Deion Sanderson fits that bill, and I'd like to see a new captain coming in. So just to conclude for me, um, I, I really appreciate the apology. I think it was brave, it was courageous, but it, there needs to be more now. He needs to put those words into action and we need to see Sanderson coming back next season firing on all cylinders. Yeah, and I think I don't know what you think, Birmingham City supporters. I think that statement that Matt's just made is relevant to a lot of players. They need to come back and they need to show us a lot more as well. Dion in particular will know, you can tell from that statement clearly, that he knows he's let himself down. He knows he's let the fans down, the club. And uh, he clearly, from that statement, wants to make it right. So uh, let's see what happens with uh, with Dion. Uh, my personal view, I think he's a decent player, as I've already mentioned. And I hope he goes and fulfills what he said in that statement and can be a really important asset and a big part of our season next season. But what do you think, Birmingham City supporters? Uh, what do you, what's your opinion? Let us know in the comments below. Myself and Matt are always glad to see your uh, comments and always you know happy to uh, respond to them. Uh, and also, if you did like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't checked us out on our social media channels already, make sure you go over to our X page and Instagram page and you'll see those handles appearing on the screen right now. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos all about Birmingham City. And myself and Matt will see you on the next video.